So about five years ago, I got something called endocarditis. Endocarditis is a virus that attacks the inner lining of your heart and into your valve. One in a million people get it, 90% 90 90 of the people that get it die. But at least in my rare case. I had five different surgeries and open heart surgery was the last. During that surgery, I had a stroke and it impaired the vision part of my brain and the left side of my body. So what ended up happening was, I was to go back now four years ago when it happened and tell you from the beginning how everything went. This is how it kind of go. So about, about four years ago, I remember I, was, I had gotten really sick. And during that time where I had gotten really sick, you know, I was like, because usually when I get a cold, I, I go to the gym and I work out. So I had gone to the gym and I had worked out. And and after the workout, I remember sat, sitting down and trying to get up. And then I felt, completely felt. I remember one of the employees told me, oh, you need help getting up. Or you need help getting to your house. And I was like, yeah, I'd love that. So then I go home and I fall asleep for a whole day. So I'm like, wow, this is really uncommon. This isn't something that really happens to me. So I'm like, maybe I need to go to the hospital. So then I end up going to the hospital with my little brother and my sister. And, you know, I, I go in and they're like, oh, you have the common cold, go home, drink some fluids, drink some OJ, blah, blah, blah. You know what they usually tell you. So then I had gone back home, and at this point, the whole day I'm hallucinating. My temperature's at 107. Um, I'm, I think people are robbing my house. I'm, in, I'm over there looking under my bed, telling my sister a whole bunch of stories, calling people, tell them, telling them I'm at the gym, working out, doing some basketball drills. Because usually, but, but at this point, it was three o'clock in the morning, and this is this is the calls that I was making. So then my sister brings me to the hospital again. My sister and my little brother bring me to the hospital again, and this time I'm at the point where I can't really walk right now. You know, I'm having trouble walking. So my sister and my little brother are helping me. So the, the people at the front desk think I'm kind of drunk, so they kind of like, you know, they get drunk people a lot. So they kind of thought, and then they finally realized that I wasn't drunk, so they brought me back in. They're like, listen, he probably has this, this, and that. Have him get some rest. So go home, I, I got some rest. My sister came up and checked on me. And I was fully covered in hives. So then I go back to the hospital again. And they, and they, and now at this point, they're like, wow, the nerd, well, there was a different doctor there, obviously. Thank God. Um, so now after that, after that different doctor, he said that after a whole bunch of tests that they ran and stuff like that, like he either has this or that. Um, honestly, I, to tell you the truth, this isn't possible for him. We need to send him to a different hospital. So at this point, I got brought to a different hospital in Boston, Brigham Women's. And at this hospital, um, they still hadn't found what I was, what I was, what I had gone in. And a couple days later, they. They ended up finding what I got, what I have, but they didn't end up finding how I got it, which was difficult because I didn't have any visible cuts or anything that really supported it. So after that, um, you know, and then the thing that they found out right after that too is the one thing that I was, that would cure this disease or this virus, um, I was allergic to it. So then after that, what had happened um, is now the, this virus is gonna grow and get bigger. So they were planning on doing open heart surgery a couple years later, but that wasn't the case. So immediately I go in for my first surgery and a couple days, a couple days later I end up going for my first surgery and they do my hands, right? They do my hands and they clean out the joints and they do a whole bunch of th uh, things to my hand surgically. And during that process, um, I had a stroke and blood clots ran to the tip of my fingers. If I have a picture, I'll show it to you. It'll show up on here. I had some black fingers here, really black, really black. It caused some like tissue scarring here and over here as well. Um, and then after that, they, they after that surgery, a couple, a week, a week or two later, they ended up doing my knees, and then a week or two later, they ended up doing my joints at, the, at my feet. After that. Um, and then, um, you know, I complained to the, to the doctor about a pain that I was having in, in my leg. You know, and, and through this whole point, I was always positive. I was, I was always giddy and jitty and happy. And this doc the doctors there and the nurses, they were really cool. I'd always joke around with them. And 
I had told I had told the doctor that I was like I was like I have a pain here and literally for hours where he was like feeling right here like trying to figure out what it was and you know through that process he's like digging at it and I'm like yo you know you look like Harry Potter <laughs> because he had this little scar on his forehead and he wore these glasses but he was a funny dude too so he was like oh yeah <laughs> you would be you would say that but yeah so a whole bunch of things and then uh, during that process you know he ended up finding that I had a cloth that was about this big so you know he goes to the doctor he's like we need to have immediate surgery um so my one of my cousins had told me that had they had over he had overheard one of the doctors saying that they were going to cut off my leg so she said he's a very active person they shouldn't do that but the chances of that clot running to my brain were very 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 high and they didn't want that and cutting off the leg was the most safe thing to do and the fastest thing in the way to get out of it so if you could tell they obviously didn't cut my leg off um, they had gone through it because they had heard that I was an active person. So they tried getting the clot out before it could even run up there. So I'm, a, I'm doing a little bit better. And they send me to Spalding Hospital for rehab. So I'm getting rehab now. And the, the you know, I'm, 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 I'm walking, you know, trying to get my joints a little bit better and stuff like that because it kind of hurt. It was very hard to walk. And by that time, in the time that I was in the ho at Spalding Hospital, I was having these cold heat flashes, these heat cold flashes. Like I would be shivering, shivering. Like I couldn't, I could not control it at all. I'd be so cold, and then I'd get so hot after. I like I'd be in movements where I was like stuck for minutes, for 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 minutes, for hours, like this, just shaking in the bed. Mind you, I was in the hospital for three months, in both of these hospitals. Um, and I was shivering, and then I get, I, I wear, they, they throw blankets on me, they jump, they, a whole bunch of people would help me out, keep me warm. Um, I remember through this time, it was very tough, and very, you know, I felt like I was gonna die. Like, there was moments where I was like, you know, this might be my last breath, like, I, I don't know what, what's gonna happen to me. But I stayed positive, and I was like, you know, I'm, I'm gonna fight this, I'm gonna get through it. So then they end up taking my temperature, and that's how I went away. Like something's wrong, so they do a, a chest X-ray, and they they they, find, they end up doing an echocardiogram or whatever they call those things, and they find out that the virus is getting a lot bigger in my heart and it's making a huge hole. So then they send me immediately to Bergen and Women's Hospital, and like we need to have immediate open heart surgery. So for those type of occasions, they usually have their top surgeons. So I had the top surgeon, which was crazy because he came in the day before the surgery came with an Armani suit. He was fresh to death. He was he was he was he was fly dude. I told him I was like, yo, <laughs> let me be a heart surgeon. <laughs> and then during that time, what happened was um, he had told me um, what they were gonna go about the surgery. I said, bam, I was I was set to have the surgery a, a, a day later. He comes in, he tells me, you know, he had me sign some things. Like, the chances of me dying are very high. He told me like that. Very, he told me like that. And I'm like, all right, you know. And then obviously my family's there, and they, they're, 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 they're there. But I'm positive. I'm like, you know, I'm going to make it. You're going to get me done. So, a five-hour surgery, right? But now what's crazy is, during that surgery, I had a stroke. And it impaired the left side of my body and the vision part of my brain. So I was completely blind after the surgery and I had no mobility in my left side, the left side of my body, no mobility at all. Like I really could barely move. It would be very uncoordinated. Like I would try to do this and it would look like that. Like I tried to tap my fingers like I am right now and it would look like this. Like I'd be like all over the place. So now, um, I, after the surgery, I, wake, I remember I remember going, getting out of the bed and flipping out, getting getting into this bed and they had to strap me down because and put me to sleep because I was flipping up. I thought I woke up during the surgery. And it's crazy because I was blind so my eyes were closed. I thought it was the, the, the whatever you call that stuff, the anesthetic, the anesthesia. Um, and the anesthesia, I thought it was keeping my eyes closed so I'm like flipping out and I'm all over the place because I, I couldn't see anything. So I'm like, I'm, I'm awake, I'm awake, stop the surgery. <laughs> I was just so much fake because it killed and I'm like, I felt like something was drilling into my chest. Something was going through my chest and it obviously did because I had a heart surgery. But it was 
crazy because, you know, right after that, I had gotten sent to to the ES. The ESU is usually when one nurse stays with you um, the whole day, and you only have one nurse that attends to you and stays in there with you. And I was in that, and I was in that part of the building for one for one to three days. And after that, they had sent me to where now one nurse is in charge of four patients or five patients that had had open heart surgery. And um, now this is where it got really hard because I had had open heart surgery and literally any type of movement was what would hurt like crazy. And on top of it, I had and on top of it, I had this virus that they still hadn't hadn't cared for me. So what they ended up doing was desensitizing me to to the one thing to the one virus to the one thing that can kill the virus, which was penicillin. It's the one thing that I'm allergic to. But they desensitized me to it. I, don't, I wonder why they didn't do it in the beginning. They had put this pick line that attached this that came through here. It was like this pin, and it went in, and it was dripping penicillin into my heart. And it was dripping and dripping and dripping it, oh, slowly killing the virus. But at this point, you know, I couldn't see anything and the, the, the doctors didn't know I was blind. So they had ran tests and did a whole bunch of things. And like, listen, I'm, I'm and I remember they were like, listen, like we're trying to, we're, they wanted to figure out what it was. So they were running a whole bunch of tests, seeing what it was and, you know, this X chart thing. And I'm like, I can't see, I can't see any of it. So I told them I couldn't see, blah, 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 blah. And the thing that's funny about it too is because I remember my friends would come and I had no coordination on the left side of my body, and um, I could easily use my right hand uh, to bring it, because obviously like, you could do this with your eyes closed, but with your left hand you can't, because um, I had no coordination. And I was like, all right, someone passed me the juice and, and the fork. I mean, someone passed me the juice, and I'll, and I'll drink it. So I grab it with my left hand, you know, I'm blind, but I can't see something like that. They pass it to me, and I put the straw in there, and I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> this is the funniest thing uh, because I had, I had no coordination left side, but I was like, listen, I'm going to get this hand better. And I would tell people, this hand's going to get a lot better. Like, I'm going to use this hand a lot. And it did get better. <clears throat> and I had to work on the foot after, but that I did when I went back to Spalding. Uh, so that, I'm going to tell you that story in a little bit. So then this side of my body was... I was trying to work and I was trying to get it better. I was like, listen, I'm tapping them over here every day like this. And I'm, at the same time, I'm still trying to recover from all these surgeries that I had the day before, which would kill, obviously, because I had grip, grip, like, all over the place. So then after, um, you know, it was funny, because I remember because I was a lot more, I was very positive in trying to get this arm back, um, so I did. And I remember after the surgery, I did whatever I could to get the coordination back in my hand. And the same thing with my leg. So then a week later, I remember this whole process, like through these, these three months, I barely slept. I had nurses and, and doctors coming in to check on me at a whole bunch of different hours of the nights. And it was very difficult, but I stayed very positive because I knew that pain wasn't a thing that was going to last forever. Tough times, the thing is that tough times will always come, but tough people will always overcome it. And it's about being mentally and physically strong towards those certain things that, towards those certain obstacles that come your way. And now the things that that now after after that happened, and a week later, you know, I'm in this, I'm, 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 I'm in pain still, and it's ridiculous. I have my friends come visit me, we have these laughs. I'm always a funny person, no matter what. I was positive. I stayed in tune with with here. I never got there's moments where I could. There's moments where I was like, I couldn't breathe during the surgery. There's moments where I was like, I, I felt like I literally was going to die that day. And I still remember it like it was yesterday. Um, that was literally the day, I think it was the third day of the surgery. Um, there was this moment where I literally, for a full two minutes, was trying to grab a breath of air and I couldn't breathe at all. I remember the doctors coming in and everyone rushing in to press this alarm thing. Um, and they're like, oh, everyone has to get out of the room. And they were trying to get me to breathe again. Um, and they eventually did. But I literally thought that I was at my last breath of air um, and I was going to die. And, it, and when 
and that kind of happens so you get a different perspective of life. Um, knowing that I'm, you know, very grateful that that happened. I mean, not that that happened, but that I've overcome those things. And I'm here today to be able to talk about it. And, you know, I want to help anyone that's been through a similar situation or someone that's just going through a hard time and needs help getting out of it. Um, so, you know, if you find yourself in need of, of, of personal development or any part of your life or if you feel like I can influence you in any different way or any part of your life, um, let me know because I can. I've done a lot of personal development after the, the years that I've, I've had an open heart surgery, after I've had open heart surgery. And the thing is, I've, I've, I haven't, I've had, a, I've overcome, um, I got super skinny, I lost over like 100 and something pounds. Um, I've overcome blindness a little bit, not overcome blindness, but I just had trouble seeing letters now. Which is a disability, which, which in lead return had made me, had put me in the position of not getting, not being able to get certain jobs. But I love the iPhone because Siri is a good friend of mine. Um, she, she does my text messages, everything, so we're good. <laughs> um, and uh, I'm very appreciative of everything in life that has happened to me. And if I was to go back, I'd do everything the same. trying to get, not trying to work on my legs, get back the coordination on my legs. When, what ended up happening with my legs was now, I'm walking and I'm working on it, and I, they do these little balance drills, and I'm like, ah, I'm in pain because of my open, the, the, the surgery, and I'm like, ah, I don't try to stay balanced, and it's super hard, but I was like, you know what, let's get this done. And I remember my time, the OT would come, the, the occupational therapist would come in, and he'd, sit in, and he'd be like, yo, let's get this done. I'm like, yeah, we're gonna get this done, bro, don't worry, I'm gonna be walking again, you know, I'll play basketball again. And he's like, yeah, let's get it. So, you know, we were, we were kind of like a pea, two peas in a pod with each other. You know, we were chilling. Like, it was cool. And, and I cracked jokes with him. He's a, he's a good OT. Occupational therapist. Or phys oh, oh, um, our physical therapist. Physical therapist. Occupational therapist is like something else, right? I don't know. Whatever. Uh, um, so what ended up happening was, it, you know, I, I ended up obviously walking again. And you know, I'm at this point where I still am having trouble because the left side of my is, is recuperating and still trying to get that coordination back. And on top of it, I'm, I'm recovering from all these different surgeries that I've had. It had led me to the person I am today. And I'm very grateful. And I want to thank everyone that was there supporting me and people that prayed for me. And, you know, uh, you know hopefully this story can help you. Can help a certain person that has been through the situa same situation, but is looking for a way out. And I'm here to tell you that you, you can make it through it. You know, if I have, you can. And, yeah. God bless and have a great day. And subscribe if you feel like I can be of any influence in your life. And leave a comment and press the notification button because I will be posting a lot of videos on personal development, on how to grow in certain areas of your life if you're having trouble whatever areas of your life because obstacles are always going to come your way or jump through them because I'm telling you right now if you look for the easy way out you only get the, the hard way in God bless have a great day